The Supreme Court ruled the reproductive health law is not unconstitutional. However, the High Tribunal um, says eight provisions of the law, which was also considered as a ma major victory for the church and other pro-life groups. It was a balancing act. Everyone scored a victory. And joining us tonight on News Live is Health Secretary Enrique Ona. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Robert, and to our listeners. Sir, with this new development, now will the government proceed with the implementation of the law? Oh, of course, yes, uh, except that we are going to do some modification with respect to the uh, 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 sections that were uh, deemed unconstitutional, and these are uh, about eight uh, aspects of the, uh, of the provision of the law. So now, what can, we, what can the people expect now? What kind of information and educational campaign will be coming from the DOH? Oh, essentially, it would uh, complement what we have been doing all along, mm -hmm. making sure families, especially our mothers or our, 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 uh, our uh, potential uh, mothers, would be given the proper information as to their uh, desire to uh, either have the number of children that they would like to have or space the children they would like to have. Mm -hmm. Now with this law, does this mean that condoms and contraceptives will be now distributed in all health centers and public hospitals? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Robert, that's correct. And what kind of um, information and education will be given to those um, uh, mothers, those families that will be um, given these contraceptives and uh, well, in these will, health centers? They will be given the uh, proper information uh, with regards to what is uh, scientifically proven as ways of, uh, of contraception mm -hmm. and at the same time uh, being uh, able also to not only uh, concern ourselves with uh, contraception or family planning but at the same time also give our women, our young, uh, uh, our, uh, our teenagers uh, the necessary information so that uh, they would not get pregnant because this is essentially is among our more serious uh, concern uh, with uh, early pregnancy among our women. If you look at the RH law, um, sir, what is its strength? Oh, the major strength of this law is that local governments now are mandated to make sure that uh, family planning uh, information as well as devices and and uh, medicines are made available to those who would like to have it. Meaning, therefore, that local governments mm -hmm. cannot anymore make or pass uh, uh, certain amendments to the law on, uh, on family planning. Mm -hmm. So there were also penal provisions that were declared as unconstitutional. Now, is this a blow on the law's implementation? Well, not really. In, in essence, uh, it just uh, removes those penalties. And uh, I think to a certain extent, uh, it really just makes uh, the law uh, less, uh, less um, aggressive as far as uh, family planning is concerned. But at the same time, it does not really weaken this because uh, all along, the position really of government is that we give the, the couple the, the right and the, uh, the option to decide on what uh, family planning uh, information or uh, practice they would so desire. Now, sir, there's one provision that states that um, women can now undergo reproductive health procedures without the consent of the husband. Now, what is your take on this? And what kind of procedures are these? Well, uh, it would probably mean if uh, one would like to have a tubal ligation, for example. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's not really a big yeah. issue because uh, um, as, as a, in a Filipino family, whatever uh, contraceptive practices mm -hmm. or practice a family decides to have is essentially really a, uh, uh, info, a couple's uh, agreement mm -hmm. and decision. Mm -hmm. So in essence, to a certain extent, yes, uh, it's important that, or it is a, uh, a resolution of an issue that has been very controversial. But at the same time, to, to, to me, this difficulty or this uh, um, provision really is, is not that important because, as I said, 
whatever a couple decides, it's really a decision of both the husband and the wife. So going back a little bit, you, you were saying that the RH law is now on a national scope. Now, if we look at it this way, that means that the local government units now have to follow and implement this, even if they are against that is uh, correct. the procedures? That is correct. As a matter of fact, to me, that is the main strength of this law. Mm -hmm. Meaning, therefore, that local executives, whether it's the governor or the mayor, cannot impose his uh, personal belief with regards to family planning and contraception. But that it has to be uh, the option uh, of of the couple, meaning uh, the the uh, the the, uh, the the mother or the the husband and the wife, and not anymore the option of the governor or the mayor. Now, how can we ensure now that the minors will be properly guided and that these won't be, you know, used by the minors? Well, that's why it's very important that advocacy and information is given to the public, to the mothers and to the parents in general, as well as uh, uh, making sure that this information or this educational uh, uh, portion is included in, in, our, in, in our curriculum. Mm -hmm. And that's why there was a lot of debate as to how this teaching would be given in our schools. And I think that has been resolved uh, with regards to how it would be. And this is quite clear in the IRR of this, of this law. Mm -hmm. So given our limited time, could you just briefly tell us now, how will our country benefit from the law and will it improve the population management program of government? And finally, will it reduce wanted pregnancies and will it help the poverty reduction program? That you have mentioned essentially what this, uh, this law will do. Mm -hmm. It gives the uh, parents and especially uh, targeting the, the poor segment of our population the information as well as the uh, facility as, as well as the facility so that uh, these commodities mm -hmm. are available to them and therefore gives them the right the option and the right to to decide on the size of their family and the number of children they would like to have so no. this would therefore uh, redound mm -hmm. to uh, better family uh, life a, bet a healthy family Mm -hmm. a, uh, healthy children and eventually uh, on the long term a major uh, a major strategy for poverty reduction mm -hmm. as our final word what are, the, what are the next steps from from here on out well uh, we are going to of course uh, wait for the final or the complete uh, um, decision of the Supreme Court I haven't read it yet mm -hmm. although I have been given a copy of its of its uh, important provisions with regards to what were uh, made unconstitutional mm -hmm. and so we are going to see how uh, how the IRR will be mm -hmm. uh, modified to, to suit and follow mm -hmm. the uh, decision of the Supreme Court but at the same time uh, I'm pretty certain that those provisions of the law that have not been made unconstitutional uh, will be uh, aggressively implemented uh, here on. Okay, on that note, thank you very much for joining us here tonight on News Live. That was Health Secretary Enrique Ona. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Robert.